Hi, my name is Stephanie, I'm autistic, and I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Atypical. Today's video is definitely gonna be a lot more laid back. <laughs> Thank you to those who suggested this and also to specifically my patrons for voting on this as one of the video ideas that you would like to hear from me. Now, Atypical is a series done by Netflix that basically centers around an autism family. The main character, or who's supposed to be the main character, is Sam. He's a high school-aged autistic individual who kind of goes through his classes. He's got his headphones on. He's got his notepad. He has a special interest in penguins and is very good at art. I am not even remotely <laughs> considered a film or TV show critic. I know that a lot of people, especially autistic people, did not like this show. They felt like there wasn't maybe an appropriate way of showing autism or an autistic person, and they felt that Sam lacked a personality and his personality was just autism. And while I can get where that's coming from, and I do agree that they really should have developed Sam as more of a person than just a person who just embodies autism. <laughs> I did enjoy the series. Now, the first season was very characteristic of a Netflix show with using Sam to say lots of crude and inappropriate things because haha, -ha, that's funny, especially because he's autistic, I guess. And it was just very, very characteristic of Netflix originals. That's just kind of how they go about things. And so the first season, I wasn't like super pumped about a lot of the parts because they felt honestly just like shoehorned in to be like, haha, we're funny because we made him say something awkward that he really shouldn't say out loud and it's okay because he's autistic. It was just kind of weird. However, I did like being able to see a show centered around an autistic person and their family. I think that the issue that a lot of people had was actually not really being able to see a lot of Sam from his own introspection, if that makes sense. So like, we were seeing the outward manifestation of what was going on with Sam. And I think they did a pretty decent job here but you still maybe weren't plainly given what he meant, except for sometimes through the translation of his therapist, which I personally appreciated her translation because it helped me understand myself. So there were moments where he would repeat facts about penguins, and I think this was the second season I'm thinking of right now. He was repeating facts about p penguins and people were like, oh, you know, stop talking about your special interests are so annoying right now, it's not the time, blah, 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 we get it, oh, yay, penguins, whatever. But he wasn't really necessarily processing or talking about penguins. He was processing his feelings about his family and the issues between his parents. A lot of what they show on there is like that unpredictableness that a lot of people outwardly see about autistic people. Like, oh, he didn't care about his parents' issues. And then all of a sudden he blew up at his sister because she kept moving his toothbrush where it didn't belong. Seeing those things played out on screen for me were really helpful <laughs> because I felt seen in a way that I haven't really because on TV shows and movies or whatever, the most we tend to get is either a super stereotype, which uh, some people argue that Sam is a lot of a stereotype, but either the super stereotype, autistic savant, unapproachable person, or you get like the ha, funny, quirky, just a little bit awkward, but it's so lovable kind of thing, but nothing really seems to really dig into anything further. It, it doesn't go into our thought process other than, oh, ha ha, they took it literally. But there's so much more to the experience and to how we process our emotions and how we process the world around us. And I really liked that they did that particular scene or scenes <laughs> because it helped me see maybe as an example of how these things can work for us and that sometimes you have to listen a little more. 
Uh, like, people could look at Sam and think, oh, he doesn't care. Like, all he cares about is penguins. But he's relating his issues in himself and in his family through his special interests. And that's why I think special interests are super important for autistic people because it's like they use that as a safe place to express and to be able to kind of understand the world around them and to process things that they might not even realize they're trying to process. You know, uh, with Sam again, in him blowing up at his sister, he says, I think it might be because of my parents, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh no, it was actually because of my toothbrush. So it's like, sometimes even we assign the wrong thing to what we think we're processing, but people, whether it's our own reflection or other people's paying attention, <laughs> might be able to catch that we're actually processing something different that's going on. And I really appreciated being able to see that on screen, even if Sam is more of a stereotype or if he doesn't have, you know, as much personality as you want. I personally saw that as a really good moment and those kind of moments throughout that weren't all about like, ho oh, ho, he said the wrong thing. I think another part of this is that it is over-dramatized a lot. And while some people find that maybe annoying or like, oh, that's just a stereotype, for me, <laughs> as an autistic person, sometimes things have to be very plainly put to me. Sometimes I have to see someone else use penguins to explain what's going on in their life. Sometimes I have to see it just like said for me, for me to go, oh, <laughs> that's me. And so, yeah, I kind of appreciated that even though, you know, people who would prefer other things might not. So other than Sam, we have his mom who takes up, I think, a lot of the spotlight as well in the series. Her name is Elsa. She is, you know, your typical autism mom. She's trying to keep all those appointments and all those things and make sure that Sam has everything he needs. A lot of times you'll find that she will limit Sam, like, oh, honey, you can't do that because you're autistic. She might not say those words specifically, like, oh, you know, maybe you don't want to do that. Are you sure you're ready for that? I don't think you're ready for that, etc. And this kind of becomes an issue between her and her husband as well. There's a lot of hints, in my opinion, <laughs> that Elsa is also autistic but doesn't know that. And I think this was, this is one of those moments where Netflix did something that not all shows will do and I think they listen to feedback a lot. I think we saw a lot of things as viewers that they didn't realize they were writing because season one, you know, they were talking about the premise for Atypical and they were like, you know, oh, he has autism, but like, he's like the most normal out of everyone. Everyone's all like weird and stuff. But there are hints with the way Elsa is very rigid about the plans and how things are supposed to go and she's got her calendar, she's got her lists, and she's very anxious. Anxiety is like a major hallmark for autism. Obviously you can have one without the other, but it's just there's a lot of things that point in that direction. She also bonds better with Sam than the dad does. This obviously could be that she's just the mother, or it could be that she, on some level, understands Sam more. Then we have a sister, Casey, and she has quite a bit of side story on her own. You really get to see sibling in the situation, and there was something she said that, like, broke my heart, and she was talking to someone where she was getting an opportunity to go to another school, and they had used the term NT, in their household all the time for neurotypical. She was little, she didn't understand what that meant, and she thought NT meant empty, as in E-M-P-T-Y, and that being around people who are autistic made them empty. And that really hurt <laughs> because she would get overlooked a lot because her brother needed a lot more support than she did. And even though it's not really conducive to the preferred narrative, I think it's important for the siblings to be seen too. I don't know, it just broke my heart <laughs> because I, I would hope that's not how you feel being around me, being around people like me that you're not drained and empty because you're around us and that makes me sad 
And yeah, so yeah, but with Casey, she has a lot of her own story. There are times where I thought they were kind of alluding to her being autistic, especially in this first season. I don't remember exactly why. I can't remember exactly what it was that pointed me in that direction. Second season, they seem to completely drop that concept. And then third season, they seem to be t pointing to both Elsa and Casey as possibly autistic. Elsa, they definitely were pointing at her autistic tendencies, even very obviously showing her hand flapping nervousness. Casey is compared to her mother by her father for her need for lists and such. Of course, they could be just saying like, everybody has autistic traits, or they could be listening to the audience who is saying, pretty sure these people are autistic, you've written them that way, you just don't realize it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the, what the plans were. We also have the father, his name is Doug, and we're suspecting that he is the reason that there will only be one more season to this show, because the man playing his character has said some things that are not really appropriate to say about people and insulting their intelligence based off of photos and making what some people would consider ableist slurs um, regarding individuals, which really isn't a good look when you're supposed to be playing the loving father of an autistic person on TV. The character Doug, you know, he doesn't really know how to connect with Sam. Sam isn't your typical teenage boy. He's, he's not the stereotype of what you might imagine your son to be like. And he doesn't seem to be as open to like emotional things and n not open to the bro talks and stuff like that. And you see kind of like a slow, building of their relationship as uh, the mother Elsa kind of lets go of her like grip of having Sam be her child. Now what's interesting about Doug is that they use him to kind of highlight the crazy culture that can go along with autism. They're at a meeting one time, it's like a parent meeting group, seems to be a place where you're supposed to be safe to talk about you know, issues you're having in your family, and I wholeheartedly agree that things like this should exist. Families should be able to talk in a safe place about their feelings. Obviously, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows, and people need a safe place to be able to talk to people who might understand what they're going through. He starts talking about, like, how he, you know, is having trouble relating to his son, and he didn't use, <laughs> he didn't use the right words, and the group kind of shut him down because they, I think he didn't use pers first and first language or something. And I think if I remember correctly, there was this whole thing about, well, you're lucky because your son is actually verbal and just this comparativeness where it was supposed to be a safe place, but there was the language policing. There was the like, you know, our issues worse than yours, etc. That is so prevalent really on the autism community, as in the families around autistic people and the autistic community. Don't know what's going on with that, but it was interesting to see that kind of highlighted. There's a lot of, you know, character things that go on that I'm just not going to go into, and hopefully I didn't really spoil too much of the plot for anybody who hasn't watched this show yet. As I mentioned before, there will only be one more season and it will be pre premiering in 2021. So that will be the fourth and final season. I am glad that they know ahead of time so they'll be able to basically wrap the story up. I think by the time we got to the third season, there were stuff that happened that was interesting to me. I was emotionally involved in the issues between Sam and his friend. But at the same time, it really didn't feel like the story was actually going anywhere. So maybe that's kind of a part of why we just kind of need to wrap it up and give it its fourth season and go on with life. Now there are many other characters and many other like sub stories and things and intricacies and blah 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 that I'm really not interested in going into. It is a pretty interesting show in my opinion. I know again a lot of people <laughs> weren't super happy with it. Let me know what you thought about a typical or think about it I guess. It's not quite over yet. Uh, the, the last three seasons uh, so far. What have you thought? If you enjoyed this video go ahead and drop a like. If you're interested in autism related content from my perspective, research etc. <laughs> I try to upload every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope you're all having a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you in my next video.